This is the sales tax training, which we do every two weeks, and today's topic is generating sales appointments using surveys. This specific, specific type of sales strategy is known as catechism sales. It's a, it's a subtopic or subcategory of insight selling. We've talked a lot about insight selling on different calls that we've done, but the reason why we talk about it so much is it's, it's really the most powerful and effective means of acquiring customers. And surveys is a major component of that is because it's the mechanism by which we actually create the insights that translates to more customer appointments. And so today's discussion is basically diving deeper into that whole category and trying to understand how to generate more insights in order to generate more sales appointments. If you haven't had a chance to review some of these books, I'd highly recommend it. Um, Insight Selling, The Challenger Sell, Conversations That Win the Complex Sell, Sells EQ, and The Challenger Customer. Now, the reason why all of these different sales studies have come to the same conclusion is basically insights are what compete with our biggest competitor as a sales professional, which is Google. Google is an information mechanism that allows the buyer to basically eliminate the sales professional from the sales equation and conversation. And so unless we provide insights, we won't be part of that sales conversation and buying cycle of, of the customer. And so by providing insights, we're able to regain not only the chance to have a discussion with them, but also their mind share. Um, if you missed our insight selling training, uh, this might be helpful for you to help expand some of the context of what we're talking about today. So you can check that out on our YouTube channel. Now, there's three main benefits of using surveys. The first of which is to create dialogues with customers that we normally wouldn't have access to. And that's what this, I, I think this is kind of like the golden key. It's something that opens doors that normally aren't open to us. The second advantage of using surveys is it creates information enclaves, or basically knowledge monopolies. Again, we're competing with Google in terms of mind share from our prospects. They're doing a lot of the research on their own. And so if we have a monopoly on some of those informational enclaves, then we can gain that mind share back from those customers. It also creates sales assets, which I like to call virtual sales reps. Basically, the, the, the information and the content that we're able to gather through the surveys is a selling machine that works for us and helps demonstrate the value and the information that we have as a sales professional. Another major benefit of, of using surveys is it allows us to be both proactive and productive. A lot of times in the sales 2.0 world, we're expected to create these virtual mouse traps to help attract customers and basically wait for them to come around. And a lot of us really need to be proactive at the same time. But being proactive means selling, and most customers aren't interested in being sold to. They're just interested in buying. And so it's a counterproductive activity but when we use surveys as a means to engage and connect with the customer, it now becomes proactive but also productive, and that's the ultimate goal here. Because surveys taps in to a human nature, which is the survival, which is the ultimate purpose and really the, 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 what the brain seeks constantly to achieve. And the reason why surveys tap into the survival mechanism within the brain is because people see survival through comparison, by understanding what others are doing. And so in people's jobs, they'd like to see, well, what, is, what are other people in our industry choosing in terms of technology? What are they doing? What are the, what, what's the safest path for me? And so making decisions is easier when you can see what other people are doing. And so providing this information from a comparison standpoint, that's ultimately what the surveys and the, the data that you're gathering accomplishes. It allows your prospects to see what others are doing, which allows them to feel safe in their decisions. This is also similar to a lot of the methodologies that John Rulin talks about in his book, Giftology, which is another good read. But it's about helping others, it's about providing value and information, which is just another flavor of the insight self. So let's go ahead and jump into what this looks like. So. There's a lot of different form services out there. I would recommend Google Forms. It's by far the most robust and easy to use. 
you can embed the surveys directly in the email, which makes it much more effective and you can get much better results by doing so. We're not going to talk specifically how to create the survey. Um, I think it's easy enough to actually do on your own, but if you do have any questions, you can reach out to any of our staff. We'd be happy to work, walk you through that. For those of you who would like to use some advanced options, there is a tool from a third party known as Shitsu, and they have a lot of great advanced options that you can integrate and add on to your service. Um, if there's enough interest, we can do a specific training on Shitsu. Um, so if you'd like to see us do a training on this, just let us know. Now, you're probably wondering, how do we get people to actually answer surveys? It's hard enough to get people to answer the phone or even respond to an email, so why would they go out of their way to actually answer a survey? Now, if we go back to what we discussed earlier, people are really interested to know what other people are doing. And so in exchange for the survey information, the way we convince individuals and prospects to actually answer surveys is by promising them the overall results. And so that's by far the most effective means of getting and creating incentives for people to answer surveys. Now, there are some surveys where, you, where the incentive would have to be a gift card, and we'll talk about when that makes sense. But for the most part, the value should come from the actual data results. So let me just walk you through a few examples of what this actually looks like and what the surveys would actually um, consist of. So if we were selling SD WAN, for instance, we would have these three questions. And you can, inter you can exchange these with other questions, but these are just a few examples. So we would ask, are you using SD-WAN? If so, what are your SD-WAN costs? And what is the primary purpose of the SD-WAN? So you can Google it smart enough so that you can actually um, segment the question. So if they hit no on SD-WAN, it will basically complete the survey. But um, what's great about this is you want to keep this simple. But you'll also notice that we haven't asked a lot of questions about the company. The reason, why, the reason why we exclude those questions is not because we're not interested in understanding more about the company, but because if this information is already publicly available, like the number of employees, the company size, the number of locations, we really shouldn't be asking those questions because it makes it more cumbersome for the end user to answer the survey and it ends up hurting our research process. So just keep in mind that this is that we don't need to ask questions about information that's already publicly available. All right? Another example, if we were selling bandwidth, we could ask, well, who is your service provider? What's your connection speed? What is your monthly cost? And a lot of these surveys will tie back to a theme which I call a fairness campaign. And sometimes you can do this in conjunction and through the different local cities. And a lot of times if they're a smaller location, it's easier to engage and basically say, look, we're trying, we're doing a research project to ensure that everybody's getting a fair shake when it comes to bandwidth or to their technology. We just want to compare what everybody else is getting in terms of speed and value and see if you're getting the same thing. And so we're trying to make sure that you're getting a fair price and a fair service compared to your neighbors. And typically people are really interested in seeing that and using the word fair has a big impact on whether or not they actually fill out the survey. Another example, if we were selling UCAS, we could say, well, who is your service provider? How satisfied are you with that service provider? How are you using this? Are you integrating this with something? And this will give you a lot of great information to share with others in terms of best practices and what, which service providers are most, most effective in their area. A different type of survey would be what we call the CC survey. And what this consists of is basically researching the customers of your customers. And this is by far the most powerful because these past surveys are a little bit more catered to us. Although they do provide a lot of value to the prospect, this last survey here is by far the most important and relevant to their business. And although it's not directly related to the services that we're selling, you'll find that it's pretty easy to connect the dots to figure out based off of the answers that you're getting how that translates and connects to the different products and services that you're trying to sell and then how they can enhance whatever the, the challenges that these that your customers are facing. So in the customer survey, we're asking we're, we're in this scenario we're trying to sell into accounting firms. And so we're asking customers in local in the local market whether or not they outsource their accounting services. And if, and asking them whether why they do or why they don't. 
and then also just asking them an open a new question as far as what is your biggest accounting headache? And if you could imagine getting 25 to 30 different responses, how important and powerful this would be to the different prospects in this area for accounting services. And so selling into accounting firms, this is the, the golden ticket to have conversations with them. Now, we're going to go off on a quick tangent here um, because I think I, I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to find relationship data with the results that you're producing. And what I mean by relationship data is basically if, we, if we're trying to interpret how different variables influence other variables. And so this isn't designed to be an end-all training on statistics, but if, we, if you'd like us to do a training on that in the future, we can. There's also a lot of great Google videos to make this pretty simple. But this is just designed to help expose you to the idea that this is really quite simple and easy to, to set up. So if you have some data results which you've charted out in a spreadsheet, you can click on the Data tab within Excel, and then in the top right-hand corner, you'll notice that there's a button that says Data Analysis. If you click on that, it will ask you what type of data analysis. You just hit regression, and then it will ask you what's the dependent variable and what's the independent variables. So the dependent variable needs to be on the left-hand side. You just need to select the actual data points and not the entire column. You'll include the label because that will make the interpretation of the data much easier, and then you'll just select the data points. In the X range, you'll go ahead and select all of the, the, the independent variables. And these are the variables that we're going to use to, to basically understand how they influence what we're trying to understand. And so in this case, we're looking at does, what, what factors determine whether or not someone uses SD-WAN. And so mm -hmm. what this system is basically doing is it's saying a 1 is for yes, I have SD-WAN, and 0 is no. And so when we run the regression, it basically provides us with a list of coefficients and says, out of the independent variables, this is how they influence whether or not someone has SD-WAN. And it shows that if it's positive, it means that the greater the number, the more likely they are to have uh, SD-WAN services. And if it was a negative number, it would have a negative impact, basically saying as this number increases, the likelihood of them using SD-WAN decreases. In this case, location, number of locations, the number of employees, the assets, the market value and the revenue all have a positive influence on whether or not they use that CN. Again, this is not this is just designed to help you see how um, easy it is to create this relationship data because when we're when we're creating these surveys and these data points, understanding the relationship between the different data points that we have mm -hmm. can help provide a much better story mm -hmm. for the prospects that we're talking to and helping explain things a little bit better. So when we're Coming back, again, the purpose of these surveys is to create an ongoing dialogue with our prospects. And so once we engage with the survey information, we can then go back and share this information with others in exchange for the data that they've already provided with us. So an example of something like this, if we were to do an accounting firm survey of SD-WAN users, we could say, well, 43% of the accounting firms that we surveyed are using SD-WAN. Accounting firms with 35 locations or more, or 25 locations or more, are 35% more likely to use us in it. Then we talked about the average spend of about $43,000 a year on SCWAN, or $413 per location, or $8 per employee. We also found that 46% of accounting firms use SCWAN for basically accessing their CRM, and then the other 26% use it for IT security. So this is to be an example of the type of data points that would we, we would bring back to the customer and say, look, this is what we've discovered. But what's great about this, this is just uh, a snapshot of what we're seeing in this moment. But would be extremely valuable to prospects is understanding the trends in this area. If the trends are going down, that means it's probably the wrong direction for them. But if the trends are going up, then this is probably something that they can consider and think about. It also helps us better understand the prospects and what's happening. But in addition to providing ongoing surveys and results, once we start to build a relationship of trust with the client, we can do a little bit deeper analysis. So with the SD-WAN server, we can say, look, we'd love to run some latency tests on different applications to test how impactful 
these different SD-WAN providers are and compare them to others. So imagine that you found that uh, a competitor is using a different SD-WAN provider trying to access the same type of CRM with a lower latency rate. Because you might be able to advise different accounting firms in terms of talking to them about switching to different SD-WAN providers based off of your experience and how it compares in terms of accessing different cloud applications. And so, again, if you're providing relevant, powerful insights that are niche-based and help provide real value to the clients. Also, you can, if we were, if we were doing a follow-up to the bandwidth survey, we could do speed tests, which are pretty simple and easy to do. And if, when you gather the results, uh, it kind of reminds me of those the different comparisons that they do with, with hamburgers across the industries where they have pictures of what the advertisement shows compared to what the actual hamburger looks like. And this would be great in terms of bandwidth. If you can imagine creating a similar type of graphic that kind of shows what people are, are promised and what they're actually getting in terms of latency, in terms of speed, in terms of upload speeds, this would be really interesting to your prospects and insight that can earn you a lot of appointments. Another good example of a follow-up survey is maybe running a MOS analysis on a UCAS or talking to clients about best practices in terms of migration and how to actually fully leverage different UCAS platforms. In addition to the insights that you're able to gain, Insable can help complement some of those data points if you'd like us to, to run some analysis on the data points. So you can give us a list of companies or an industry or an address list or any random group of information data points, and we can run analytics on those, on, those, on those companies and figure out what they have in common and break it down based off of the top applications across a lot of different service areas. And so what this does is if you're talking to accounting firms, you can say, look, here are the top five uh, email security solutions, and it's broken down based off of percentages and who's using what. And this might be helpful for you to understand what everybody else is doing. So if you'd like this to, to run some of these analytics, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to help you out and build your report. So just to wrap up, um, I wanted to take a step back and just kind of summarize what this really looks like from an execution standpoint. So first, we want to identify a target audience. And it's much easier if the audience has some type of a common denominator. So a common industry, a common application, common location, things of that nature. This will make it much more easy to capitalize on the information that we're gathering by sharing it across multiple parties. Also, the next step is to figure out, well, what's important to our audience? Are there any changes taking place, like SD-WAN or different security um, implications that they need to be worried about or you know, new acquisitions? And so try to figure out what's top of mind. And then once you've figured out what questions exist within your prospect's mind, come up with the questions that will answer those questions. At that point, you will distribute the survey, and hopefully you do so that you've already established a lead exchange uh, to help uh, even out the workload of actually executing the survey. And so try to engage with your referral partners in your lead distribution network and make sure that you can work through those different areas to help carry the burden of setting up this survey. Once you have the survey results, you can translate that into a nice format. You can use some of the relationship data, data points that we've talked about, but essentially you want to follow up with the survey and help the prospects understand what, what you've discovered. But that's just the starting point because now you've created this dialogue with the customer where you're in the position to recommend services and help them make better decisions based off of trends and comparison data. But really, this is just the starting point. We want to continue to learn. We want to run additional experiments. But what we've, what, we, what we've discovered so far is the what. We're just understanding what's happening. But what we want to do is we want to act on that data. And so what we've talked about in the past on our insight selling, we want to run experiments to see how we can improve the data points that we're seeing. And so this is really where the ultimate customer engagement takes place, where you together with the customer, start to run different experiments with your technologies and services to understand the ramifications of how you can help them improve their business using the technology and services that you sell. And once you start learning from these experiments, your 
information monopoly that you've created pervasively becomes solidified. And you can write and share about this in this process of basically creating these insights ultimately creates more sales opportunities and appointments. And again, this is ultimately what we're trying to create here is an opportunity for you to have an easier path to sales appointments. And surveys are the mechanism by which we create insights which allows us to merit conversations with the prospects. So that's everything for today. Um, if there's any questions,